Hey guys, what's happening? This is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com. And today's video is a sensitive topic on knees caving in or knee valgus. Now, another person in the field by the name of Lane Norton has come out and said that letting knees cave in during squats, if it's natural, should be okay. And my opinion is the answer to that is no. <clears throat> Although there is some new research and data coming out saying that there is more glute activation with your knees coming in versus being pushed out. I find that there are some big loopholes in this area, and there's a lot of older withstanding knowledge that's already been out in the field that has basically shown this to not be true. And so although I think that research papers have a great precedence in how we should perform exercises and what we should do, sometimes we have to take these new progressions with a grain of salt. So today we're going to dive into that, but first let's take a watch at the video that Lane Norton put out. Let's talk about what he's saying here, and then let's fix that. But before we get to that, please go and check out winningstrength.com, check out our sponsor ATP Labs, and check out some of the supplementation that we offer. Let's get to the video. <laughs> to build your glutes. You shouldn't have knee cave. You should never let your knees come in. If you do, you're gonna blow out your knees. There's gonna be all kinds of problems. A new study looked at knee valgus and found some results that were quite interesting. So they had people squat on a force plate and they looked at the force at various different parts of their body. So when they had people squat with the cue of kind of knees out, they found greater activation of the adductor muscles, which isn't surprising. But when they had people squat with knee valgus or let their knees cave in, they found that they got more glute activation, which seems to be counterintuitive because if you think about a lot of the movements that are used to build the glutes, it involves putting knees out. So that was one surprising result. The other surprising result, force on the knee wasn't enough force to cause injury to the ACL or different parts of the knee. This information actually kind of tracks with a real world example and a friend of mine, Leah Bavlois. And Leah, who at 69 kilos squats 225 kilos or 496 pounds. One thing about Leah is when she squats, her knees valgus and she's never injured her knees. If you don't knee cave naturally, then don't force so let's kind of go over some of these different topics of what we are really talking about here. Knee valgus increases ACL risk injury. That's not new news, that's 20 years old. A good friend of mine, Tim Hewitt, is a researcher in this area and his major focus is ACL injuries, right? Not nutrition, not any other things that Lane Norton may be known for. His major concern is the ACL and the knee joint. And his big statement is, is that when the knee collapses inward, the tibia rotates internally while the hip adducts. This combination creates extreme stress on the ACL, especially under load. Notice in the picture that Lane Norton uses in the beginning is under zero load. And again, with a person that doesn't look like they squat very much. This is where we have to be very careful in using research and using blanket terms over what they create. This person was not an amazing squatter in the first picture. Therefore, their technique is not gonna be very usable for anyone that has any level of compatibility in the squats and knows how to squat properly. This is one major issue. Studies consistently show that dynamic valgus is a primary predictor of ACL injury, particularly in the athletes performing jumping or squatting type movements. We noticed that this study showed box squatting under no load. So again, some of the information may be okay, but for a lot of us, it may not be too usable under squat form as far as using a barbell, etc. A surprising result, force on the knee wasn't enough force to cause injury to the ACL or different parts of the knee. Now, the next part of this study I want to get into talks about how that 
the valgus force is not enough to cause ACL damage. Well, what's the loading parameter? So if they're only doing their body weight and they're sitting on a box, there's not enough pressure there to cause issues. But I think what we want to decide and start to think about is how much pressure is that when we have one, two, three times body weight on our bodies on our knees? It's an interesting example to use that there's no damage when the load is so light. But as we know, injuries tend to occur with heavy loading and abrupt changes of direction. And if we don't have proper muscle function at these particular joint angles, we're gonna cause major issues as seen in the research in the past 20, 30 years. I think once we start digging into the amount of tonnage and pounds and shear force that is at the knee at around two times body weight squat, it's no wonder why we should try to work on having as perfect a form as possible. And that means not letting us, not letting our knees come in, okay? If we look at compressive forces in general with good mechanics, knee forces can equal six to eight times body weight. That's almost unbelievable, right? So for a 180 pound lifter, that means anywhere around 1,000 to 1,400 pounds can be a pressure that's being obtained across the knee and that's with good mechanics. When we have knee valgus, what else happens is we start to see the ACL and MCL load increase by 200 to 300%. This increases ACL strain by two to three times. MCL tension increases significantly. We have com compounding stress from tibial internal rotation. This means that the same six to eight times body weight compressive load becomes far more dangerous. Why? Because the ligaments, not the muscles, start absorbing the force. And so knee valgus adds anywhere from 30 to 50% more knee abduction, okay? And so if we look at the increase of knee abduction torque when knees collapse inward, this was proved by Claiborne and Sigward and Powers in 2006 and 2007. What does all this mean? This means more abduction moment, far more shear force on medial knee structures. So again, I think this is a big issue that we have to combat. And I'm going to also got, dive into the person that he uses as a squat example of why this isn't bad for your knee. Friend of mine, Leah Bavois. And Leah, who at 69 kilos squats 225 kilos or 496 pounds. One thing about Leah is when she squats, her knees valgus and she's never injured her knees. Well, if we break down the video that I just showed you now with this girl squatting close to 500 pounds at 60 plus kilos, it's impressive, no doubt. But she's so narrow that she can't knee valgus maximally, which is good and bad. But I would find that if she would actually go to a wider stance and keep her knees pushed out, she probably would squat in the mid 500s at least a 10% increase. So I wouldn't say that utilizing someone that is a genetic freak would necessarily be a great example of why you should let your knees come in, especially when I've never really seen a powerful squat that freaking narrow in competition, I think ever in my life. So her both of her knees are limiting the factor of her being able to go further into valgus. If she was in a normal squat position, I can guarantee you that both of her knees would be grenaded. So again, it's hard to use people in that particular scenario and say, well, this is a blanket statement and we can say that knee valgus is good for everyone. I think the next few slides that I'll show you and I'll keep up for quite a period of time may start to divide you over into the other area of where we go, which is do not let the knees come in at any cost and focus on technique before you build maximal strength. Now, if you're already an elite lifter and your knees are already caving in, it's gonna take way longer to fix than someone that's just beginning. But I never would say to anyone that knee valgus is acceptable at any level. It's usually a sign that there is a weak muscle group. Now, do we know if it's the glutes? We don't. But I think if we stand up and do a simple test of pushing our feet and knees outward, we can feel the glutes actually activate. And if we let our knees buck in, we can feel our glutes almost non-existent. This is why I find it interesting that they're finding more glute activation with knee valgus, which I don't think is true. But then again, maybe I'm wrong. So come on to winningstrength.com, check out some of the stuff that we've been using. And if you need online coaching and you need this form fix, do it now before it becomes a problem. 
I've hardly ever seen anyone get hurt pushing their knees out. I've seen a lot of people get hurt pushing their knees in. This is Matt Winning. Talk to you guys later.